Hello, everybody, and welcome to an update video on the Mattel's creations, because just like the dinosaurs, it too has recently went extinct. My god, did I not expect this thing to become as controversial as it did. But before we get into all of that, what was the Mattel creation? If you've been living under a rock, or even, you don't even have to be living under a rock, because I think for some Jurassic fans, this might have just cruised right on by, and they didn't even notice that it was a thing. It was basically a 500 Canadian dollar, I think it was, 300 pound, I think, I don't even know. It was a load of money. Base level, you just got the gates. That was it. These electronic gates, if you've got 5,000 backers that open, make a noise, and have lights and LEDs and look really cool. Um, then they had stretch goals, which if more backers pledged, then they would slowly unlock. And the main goal was to have all of them. That's how they showcased it. Um, and that's not how Kickstarters or uh, crowdfunding projects happen. If you know, you crowdfund a certain project, and then as, you know, they get more and more uh, stretch goals, then you get extra little bits put in. However, Mattel advertised this as the full thing. So it was incredibly confusing. And then it just sort of led to people not really trusting it because it was like, well, I'm, it, they're showing me with all these products or showing the products, but actually I'm not gonna get those. I'm just gonna get the gate. But the other unlocks were the fence with electrified team. There was the goat with the removable leg. There was the Ford Explorer. And of course the bull T-Rex, which is from what I understand and from my comments and uh, looking at other people's videos was the main thing that people wanted from this was this John Hammond collection bull T-Rex with a new head sculpt and different feet because people like that. <laughs> if you did early bird, you'd get the little signs also, but uh, it failed and it failed miserably. Not since Jurassic Park 3 have I seen such controversy in the Jurassic Park community. There's three things you don't mention in the Jurassic Park community. That is Spinosaurus, basically anything to do with Jurassic World, and now the gates. <laughs> you don't talk about the gates. Why did it fail? Well, the one reason that the products weren't that great, and we're gonna be honest, we've already had the Ford Explorer. We've already had Tim that came with the Ford Explorer. The gates are completely new and they are, was it 20 inches tall? They're like super big, these giant gates. Um, and really the only thing new that I thought was Lex, but actually, no, I I'm sorry. Just Mattel's distribution outside of America is pants. So I didn't even know that they released a kitchen set with Tim, Lex, I think some kitchen units as well as a Raptor. So, hey, that's me tall. <laughs> But even then, the Lex isn't new. Well, I say it's not new. Apparently, the Lex and Tim had different head sculpts, and it just didn't really warrant it. Um, and you could say that, why are Mattel doing a Kickstarter? Well, they've done it with the Star Wars line. I've seen that they've had some really successful Kickstarters. In fact, something very similar, uh, they managed to crowdfund within a day. Uh, but it was just one like fighter, you know, pilot jet thing. I don't know. I don't know Star Wars very well, if it isn't abundantly clear right now. Uh, but it got it funded. It had like thousands of backers. But why did this not do it? From a marketing perspective, it's the gates. It comes with electrified Tim and 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 the fences. This has been an absolute train wreck. I, I, there's no other word for it. It started with just America, and then when they realized, oh God, there's no one buying it, we made it international. And after that, when no one was still, you know, backing it they decided to uh, put the fences with the gate. So even if it did just get the bare minimum funding, you would get the gate and the fences. But even then the fences didn't seem to connect to the thing. It was, it was weird, man. Uh, the Jurassic Park gate shouldn't just be a thing. I don't know why the marketing team has decided, well, that's a place it. Just have the car, you know, go through the gates. They've never, like in the whole history of Jurassic Park, have you ever, we ever sold the gates by themselves? Only on eBay, as separate things, have they been sold by themselves. They've always been part of an enclosure or a com command compound thing. So I have no idea they've decided why they decided to do this, but they did. And it has shown that actually you can't just get anything from Jurassic 
and get it funded. A lot of people are crying that now the Hammond book T-Rex is going to disappear and we're never going to see that. I think out of this entire set, the only thing we're not going to see is probably the gates, if I'm honest. Maybe the, the sculpts for the Lex and Tim. But the Hammond, t like, they, there's already so much money that goes into designing, prototyping, painting. They have everything for it. It would be stupid to not now release it as something else. Because I think, if anything, they've noticed from this crowdfunding is people want that book T-Rex. Um, it was just so weirdly packaged. This whole Jurassic Park, you know, creation. And then you just threw in a Lost World book T-Rex. For me, personally, I'm sick of the same T-Rex over and over. I don't care if it has a different head sculpt. I don't care if it has different feet. It's still a solid plastic turtleneck T-Rex that, you know, for instance, I brought this up last time. This is the bull T-Rex, or sorry, yeah, the book T-Rex from the same sort of line, just now modern day. Well, this was from 1997, I think it was. It never felt that Kenner released the same toy over and over again with different paints. It didn't feel like that. This was completely custom, you know, maybe it's not the best thing in the world, depending what you're into. They could have easily released this again with a different paint job and called it, oh, well, it's the female T-Rex, but they didn't. They made a whole different, like, mechanical tail moving, jaw, like, locking into place, eating, biting thing. Whereas this, was it swallowed things whole and then you got them from the belly, it even had an electronic roar on the top, completely custom. So when I look at something like the book T-Rex that they were releasing with this, I just see the same old T-Rex that we've seen over and over again, because let's be honest, it's it's a T-Rex. I If you've collected every T-Rex from this Mattel line since Dominion, God help you, because there has been so many, you would have probably have 50, and I think that's an understatement. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hundred different T-Rexes that look basically the same. I want something custom, I want something different. And the Explorer that came with the set was basically the same Explorer they had re-released, except for now it had rubber tires, its interior was differently designed, which if we're gonna ask the question, it's beggar's belief really, why weren't all those things included with the original that came with Tim, with that came with the T-Rex? The only thing that was missing was a Jurassic Park gate, Lex and a goat, and you would pretty much have this whole Mattel creations in something that hit the shell. And for some reason, there were some vocal parts of the community, not naming names, but I've seen a few, you know, on Twitter or X, they were saying, you know, you need to back this and how dare you question Mattel. Uh, yes, they're a million billion dollar company or whatever, but they need to be able to do this. And there are practices and I'm not gonna get into that. Um, it's, it's just basically someone sounding their opinion and they're allowed to, the same way I'm allowed to. The problem that came with it was that they were expecting you to change your opinion. And I think that's the problem. <laughs> they were like, no, no, you're wrong. Mm -mm. And we're all entitled to our opinion the same way they were. Um, and it just came off as preachy. I think when it comes down to it, I love Jurassic. Always have done since I was a kid. But it doesn't mean that I'm gonna like everything that is Jurassic. And I'm not gonna lie, if another franchise comes out of the woodwork that is dinosaur related and is amazing, I will support that one. And if Jurassic performs the way it has been doing with mediocre film after mediocre film, in my personal opinion, um, I might not be a fan of it. I will always have a nostalgic tie to Jurassic. I mean, for God's sake, look at all this. I will always be a fan of Jurassic, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna support everything. And just because I'm a fan of Jurassic doesn't mean I'm gonna pledge hundreds of pounds or dollars or God knows what to a Kickstarter, basically, that isn't got anything in it for me. I don't care about the gates. I've already got the Explorer, pretty much everything in there. I've got it. I want to make a book T-Rex. I've got the vintage one, or I can just grab one of the thousands of uh, Mattel Rexes that I've already got and spray paint it. I could do a better job. <laughs> The Jurassic franchise at the moment, especially when the toy line's concerned, it's so fragmented. You've got the Hammond collection that's supposed to be for collectors. You've got the common baseline, which the, the sculpts look great, but then the paint jobs are lacking and look terrible. You've got the now 30th vintage anniversary line, which apparently is going to continue and do more things. And now you've got Mattel Creations, which are now going to be even more Jurassic. What they just need to do is just focus on a line. 
just do something. We had legacy in the past uh, and legacy I think is still a thing. We've got so many different types of Jurassic and maybe that's the problem. They've got their hands in so many different jars that they don't have the resources to give each one the time and money they didn't really need. I don't think this is going to be the end for Mattel Creations and I hope it's not. If it is, it's a damn shame and maybe they're just sending a message to us. I don't know. <laughs> but really, there is still plenty of things in the Jurassic franchise that this is made for. The Mattel's creation, that is, this Kickstarter sort of thing. If we just, even though it's off the top of my head, a command compound would sell like crazy. Redo it, make it look great. There's people on Etsy who are already recreating scenes from the, you know, the control room from Jurassic. And they're selling their products on there. We have hit a time where we don't have to rely on Mattel as creators to give us what we want. All you need to do, you want to spend hundreds on uh, this Kickstarter? Spend it on a 3D printer. Learn how to 3D print. Buy a few paints. And before you know it, you can make anything you want. We don't need to rely on Mattel to make it. There are still a few things that I've picked up from Mattel that I can't wait to unbox on this channel. But if I'm going to be honest, this thing, it wasn't for me. And apparently it wasn't for you guys either, except for 1,300 of them. I think if this Kickstarter got its whole, you know, funding goal, it was about 2 million. And, you know, these things do cost a lot to go into production. I, I mean, I've tried. I've tried thinking, oh, I could easily make a toy. Yeah, let's do that merchandise. And it's very expensive to get the sculpts, to get the, the testing if you want it done right. And that's obviously what Mattel has to go through. So I can understand about, you know, them needing this, especially if it's for creators or, sorry, collectors that have the expendable money. But really, at the time we're living in, we don't, cost of housing, especially in the UK, and just living in general, prices are going through the roof. We don't have an extra 200, 300, 400, 500 pound to spend on a bit of plastic that's going to gather dust. So yeah, just kind of wanted to talk about this new Mattel thing because it's it's been a big thing in the community. And uh, as me, you know, being a collector, for years of dinosaur toys uh, since I was a kid and, you know, being the target audience for the time and still kind of having that brain as an adult, <laughs> we'll be honest, all collectors do. Uh, I just wanted to throw my two cents and now that it's over, just sort of poke at the wreckage that was the Mattel Jurassic Park gate or Jurassic World that they called it for some reason, gate thing that they were doing. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and I'll see you later or bye bye